So what I mean by fair is findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So um, having your um, research online and open, if you can have it fully open, so I put a bit of a caveat on that, you have to consider sensitive data and sort of commercial interests of data and things like that. So if you can have everything open, then that is wonderful. And GitHub allows you to do that. But what you've got to remember with GitHub is that um, it, do, it isn't a long-term storage archive because it gives you the URL, but that is not a persistent identifier. So to make your research fair and your data findable, your code findable and accessible um, and everything. So we're really talking about the top parts of fair, so findable and accessible. You need to archive your data. And I would say all of your research, so not just your data, your code and your metadata files. So all your documentation to explain your data collection. You need to archive it in a long-term um, repository. Um, that gives you a persistent identifier. And then you can put, you can link, this is what I'm going to show you, GitHub to one of these. So you don't actually have to do a lot if you've got everything in your GitHub repository. You just have to make that happen, that archiving process happen. And then you can take your persistent identifier and put it onto your repository to show that you've done that archiving. And this, in a sense, makes it more accessible because um, GitHub is the place where you're doing your research. And yes, people can go and find it, but actually, if you've ever tried to find somebody else's GitHub account for their, their research on GitHub, it's really, really difficult. So um, it's you cannot find things easily on GitHub because there is so much there on it. Um, but in long-term archiving um, repositories, they have systems to enable you to find things. So they have keyword searches, which you have to fill in. They have, um, they link to other services. So if you do web searches, it's much easier to find somebody's long-term repository than it would be their GitHub repository. So this is all done through um, when you upload things on there, you have to put, uh, fill in a form, which is like a, which is your metadata. So your data about your data and or data about your repository. So your research. And all this information, this enables all of this searching to happen. So it actually makes your work much more accessible by using these long-term archiving services. And I suppose in a sense, you're also making it reusable because you're applying a license, which you have to have, um, and you're actually hopefully putting a lot of documentation from your repository into um, these different long-term archiving services. So just to show you a bit of an example of the, in terms of citing um, your, um, your work, um, obviously um, we get an, all of our credit really still from um, publishing research articles, but we can also publish things like data papers, or this is an example of a data article because they're all got slightly different names, but really where we are putting, so if you archive into um, these long-term repositories and you get your persistent identifier, so the digital object identifier or DOI, that is what you put into your paper. So a lot of um, our, our journals now require you to have a data uh, and also code accessibility statement at the end of the article. So this is an example of a data paper on my colleague Esther, who's written one about, she's and um, she does isotopes in human Dental, she's in teeth basically. So she's published her data set from her PhD and she has done a, um, a link to her. This says software availability, it's actually the data as well, but all of the information and she's published it on Zenodo. And then what people can do, they can actually cite your, cite your, um, your Zenodo archive. So she's showing that she's actually cited hers and other people's. Um, Zenodo archives there. So it's another way of actually giving people credit for their work because it's a it's another form of publication now, actually archiving data. Um, and it can be um, cited uh, in your own articles to link your work in your article to your other outputs, so your data and your code and your methodology. But it also can be used as a, a form of citation for you to give to give you credit for your data and your code. So, um, so all of these services here, and this is one thing I love to say is 
this should be a free process um, uh, and there are lots of different repositories and very long-term repositories that allow you to do this for free so do not I would say do not buy into those services which are ones that you have to pay for and have to in archaeology there are quite a lot of those so you don't have to I'm going to show you it's very easy so you don't have to buy into those services you can actually get this service for free and it's been provided by large organizations so we've got open science framework we've got figshare we've got zenodo and dataverse all of those are very large long-term repositories and um, that will they're called trustworthy uh, digital repository so tbrs um, and they allow you to share any type of research output it doesn't just have to be data it can be anything um, and they give you this digital object identifier and as i've already said github is not a trusted digital repository um, each of these repositories they have to um, have certain standards so you will see on them they have uh, like certification marks for being a trusted repository so that's another reason why we should be using those rather than just putting our things onto GitHub. And as I said, GitHub, it doesn't give you a DOI um, and things on GitHub, they change. Whereas actually when you archive something onto one of these um, TDR repositories, um, that is a static thing. It doesn't change. You can upload another version actually and get a separate DOI, but under your DOI, that cannot change then. It's, a, it's completely fixed. Whereas in GitHub, when you're using that URL for your, um, so the web address for your repository, well, you're still working on the repository. So actually the content of it just continually changes. So that's sort of another reason why you need to be archiving your work through these repositories, long-term repositories. So how do we actually do this? So first of all, I'm gonna go through linking to Zenodo. So either you can follow through, so maybe get up Zenodo, um, get up your GitHub as well, because you. what we're going to do is go back, you have to go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards a little bit to enable things to happen. So basically the process is we go and set our account up in Zenodo. Then we have to go back to GitHub and then we have to go back to Zenodo and then we have to go back to GitHub. So I said it's a bit of going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards to actually get the, all of this done. I'm going to show you the process. I'm going to explain it to you. So I'm going to go a bit backwards and forwards, I think, through these, um, yeah, through these slides. So first of all, you have to have a repository. We've already got a repository that we've been using today. So have a go with that repository. Um, you have to have a Zenodo account. So what you can do quickly, I'm going to, we're going to have a bit of time to do this. So you don't have to rush, but set up a Zenodo account. You can actually use your GitHub login or an email or even your ORCID um, de login details to actually um, sign up to the account. So whichever you think is, is good for you. Then you have to connect your GitHub to Zenodo by authorizing it to happen. So I'm just gonna go back to what this looks like here. So when you get on Zenodo, at the top of the page, you'll see your email address or the address of maybe your GitHub account will be up here and you just press this little gray button and there's a menu and then you click on the GitHub tab there um, and then what happens you will see that there is a there is a, um, a sort of drop down thing that happens for you to connect to Zenodo and uh, connect to GitHub and you will actually see a list of all of your um, GitHub repositories from that account will actually um, will actually start to appear there. So it will it will ask you to sign into your GitHub account if you haven't used your GitHub account to make the Zenodo account. That's just one little bit of a warning there. So you go onto Zenodo, you have to be logged in. You go to the settings, and actually you click on GitHub and it will bring up all of the different GitHub repositories that you have. And then there's a little toggle button. So the one that you want to switch on, you switch it. At the moment, they'll be toggled to off. You press them and they, they sort of switch to the other side. And I call it toggling. I don't know if that's the right word. It's like a little button and it slides across to the, uh, and shows the word on. Um, and that means that you've enabled Zenodo to be able to call that repository into, its, into itself into Zenodo from GitHub. What you do then is you head back to GitHub 
and um, you go to the repository you want and you create a new release. So, so I'm in a GitHub repository. What I want to do is I want to go on the releases at the side. So you'll see there should be make a release on the side and you click on that. And then it brings you up. Um, oh yeah, draft a new release. Sorry, it's because it's the second time. And then you can draft a release. So it brings you up this page and you have to create a tag. What it means is a version, because you remember that you're archiving particular versions of a repository. So um, that's this is an example of the first one. You could put version 1.0 and then you could change it to 2.0, something like that. Um, the target of the release, so is it your main branch? You might have other branches there you want to release, so it could be a different branch. Then you type in a title of the release. So I tend to put the date, so the name of the repository and then the date, uh, so the month or something like that, um, that it's been released, and you can add a description. And then you press publish release. Um, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to do that. And then what you're going to do, so this is the step here, we've created a new release, we've um, created a tag for the release, and we've pressed to publish the release. So what happens then is you actually see, you actually see that within your Zenodo account. So I'm just going to show you. So on Zenodo, you go to the upload tab, and you can add in additional information. And what I mean by that, is that GitHub here. So once you've connected the GitHub, so yeah, getting started, once you've connected it, you can see these are the repositories that I've enabled from that, um, that uh, GitHub account. And these are the other ones that are within it, which we haven't enabled. So the toggle is off, these toggles are on. That's just the difference there. But if I've done a new release, then I go to upload and it will be showed here. Um, so these are all the releases that we've done from this account. And this is the one that I was just going to show you the training one here. So this is what it looks like when you upload a GitHub repository. So it shows all the different folders and the files. Um, you can, so it will upload with minimal information. So you actually probably want to then edit the, it's the really the metadata file that you're putting there. So you can do that by pressing the edit button. And it brings you to hopefully a page, which this is the zip file of the, so this is what we've uploaded. And it's a zip file of the GitHub repository. So all of the files on the repository. Um, just to tell you all that um, all Fighters people can use this as their community now. So the Open Fighters community group, we have made a community on Zenodo. So you can actually tag in the um, community and this this would help people to find your work um, easier other vital people um, you might want to change the type of um, things that's on here so actually this does probably need changing because it says software and it's not really software it's more of a lesson um, so I should change that but I won't then we've got our digital object identifier so when you upload something from github it will automatically give you one of those um, if you were just uploading, say, a presentation, then you could reserve a DOI and just create one when you're making this form, because you can upload things, obviously, to Zenodo, not through GitHub. So if you've got your account, you can upload anything, um, like your presentations, um, your, I don't know, your preprints of your articles, things like that. You can just directly upload them. You don't need to do it through GitHub. Um, and what you do is you just create it, you press the upload button and then do a new upload and it creates this form. And then you just upload in your, at the top here, you upload in the file that you want to upload. So it's just a slightly different way. This has been brought in from GitHub, but you can just bring it in from your computer, um, from your drives on your computer. Um, then you just edit the title. It will give you the title of the repository here. So you might want to just make it into uh, a more meaningful title. It's good to add the authors. So at the moment, this is me and Celine because we've been working on this together. And a description is good um, here. And then it gives you the version. It will just, this is actually not from the tag, I don't think. This is just the version that you're put on that you've uploaded to the first one. 
um, and then you can add in some keywords um, and you can make it open access or any of those other things. Give it a license. It will take the license from your GitHub repository if you've put one on there. So it will already be there or you can edit that. And you can also put in information about any funding that you might have. And there's all this other information. So Zenodo wants you to put in quite a lot of information. And this is all the metadata. And this does help people to understand what you're uploading. It also helps it to be referenced in other, um, other ways. So it, it will link it to other um, organizations. It will link it. So um, Zenodo is funded by these organizations. So CERN, Open Air, and the European Union. So it links these things all together and it creates kind of information that is out there on the internet about your work. So it actually makes it a lot more findable and accessible. So one thing just to remember is when you're filling in the form, you don't have to fill it all in at once. You can press save and then finish it another time. But once you've done all your changes, say you press the save button and then to actually upload it onto the live website, you press publish and that will put the version, the archiving version onto Zenodo. So, but don't forget to press the save button because if you come out of that page, you will lose the work that you've done on putting all the metadata in. Form in, so we've, we've pressed the release button from the repository onto Zenodo. We've gone onto Zenodo to look for the upload. So it will automatically create one of those files. You can click on, on the uploads and you can put in any additional information and save it and publish it. Um, then what you can do is it will actually then give you one of these DOI, uh, DOI buttons and you can actually take that and you can put that onto your um, repository, which I'll just show you quickly how to do. So for example, so this is the, um, is the upload here that you can see. So here's our DOI here. So this is all the information that we put in this, this, file, this file that I just, um, this sort of form that I just showed you, that upload form. And um, so it says when you've published it and the DOI. So it gives you all these DOI buttons that you can use. So the one you want for your, um, your to put onto your readme page of your repository is the markdown one. So you just copy that and paste it into your readme file. The other one that's useful is this target URL one at the bottom here, because that's the one when you do like a presentation, this is the one that you take and you put it onto your presentation so that people can come to your presentation on Zenodo. So that's a really useful one. The other thing to point out here is like we've got um, this link here, which is um, will take the person to your GitHub repository, because actually uploading GitHub repositories into um, uh, Zenodo, it's very difficult to access the files. You actually download all of the things. So actually, sometimes people would rather just go on GitHub and find the find the files for themselves. Um, and then it's got the communities, it's got your license. And then very importantly, at the bottom here, it's got the citation as well that you can use and other people can use to cite your work. So that's at the bottom there. You can see there might be a question. So would you recommend Zenodo rather than archaeological data service, a big yes from me. <laughs> yes, I have to say, I'm not going to say it on camera, but it's a bad, it's not a bad thing. They have a particular purpose for commercial archaeology, for archaeological data service, but they're, they are inaccessible to people that don't have money. So this is a free service. So um, I would recommend people use this. Um, but thanks for your question, Sarah. But there's a, there's similar org. It's not just archaeological data service. There are similar. There are a few in America as well that do a similar service. So the archaeological data service they curate the your work for you. So you're paying for a service and you're paying for the storage. So they will help you a lot actually with with uploading your research. So you do get something for the money, and you obviously pay for the storage. You pay for the amount of storage that you need for your data and your other documents. Um, but I would say the disadvantage, so that's absolutely okay if you've got the money to do that. Um, my sort of thing is that you can learn to do it like we're learning today and it would be free. So it doesn't come at any cost. I would also say that these organizations, Zenodo and the other ones, they're not commercial organizations. So 
they actually are longer term organisations than our political data service, because the archaeological data service could become un unfunded, um, whereas these have been committed to by the organisations, basically, until that organisation completely disappears, and they're a very large organisation, so very unlikely to happen. Um, so yeah, and also, if you want to continually add different versions of your work onto our archiving services. You can't do that with our political data service. It would cost you a lot of money, whereas you can continually keep archiving throughout the project using these uh, Denodo or Open Science Framework or the other ones that I've said. So it's sort of a different, it's slightly different way of working, I would say. But yeah, that's a good question. Thank you, Zara. Um, so, um, so I'm just explained all these buttons at the side here. Um, and if you had different versions, it would actually appear at the side here if you had different versions and they do give them different URLs, but you can actually just use maybe the, um, the most recent one on your repository just to guide people to the most recent um, release. Right, let me go back to here. Um, so we've just done that last bit. So just to confuse you even more or add in more information to your brains for a bit more cognitive overload today, which we're having, um, there is a new feature that you can use with GitHub now, which is called a citation.cff file. And um, what this is, is actually to bring in, it's a bit like a metadata file within your repository. So you can create this, um, it has to be in this name within your repository. And basically what happens is if you create this file, you put in all of that metadata that you saw in the, in the um, form in Zenodo. And when you upload your repository to Zenodo, it automatically does all that form filling for you. So if you set it up one time, that's it. Every time you release a different version, it will all just be filled in for you and you don't even have to bother going to edit. You just press the release button and you know you've done the archiving so it makes it really really much more simple the other the other reason that this has been introduced is um i think because um so this is this is what it looks like this file um so it's a little bit like those um the config file that we were looking at earlier it's a little bit like that where you've got um, these different titles and then all this different information um oh, oh well. So um, the other reason that it's actually really useful is um, because it actually gives you a citation um, that you can see within your GitHub repository. So I'm just going to show you it. So um, this um, this is the training. This is for this these training courses. This is our citation CFF file here, and it actually gives you this button at the side, which allows people to cite you from your GitHub repository. So I know I've already said that. Actually, we shouldn't, in a sense, we shouldn't be using it as an archive, but this actually allows people to cite you directly from your GitHub repository. So it gives them the, the citation from there. They don't even have to go and look at it from Zenodo. It's already, it's already done from here. And the reason that this has been done really is by software engineers, so, so that they are getting more credit for the work that they are doing. Um, so it's been something that has been um, developed within the research software engineering community. And I think it's really great. It, at the moment, you can only put in um, the type of um, repository as software or data. Um, I've been saying to them that they need to expand that, but they're saying at the moment it's too much effort to make the, because it, it's, it's still this, in, they've managed to get this integration with Zenodo. Um, so, um, so they've made this happen for data and for software repositories. Um, what we do is um, we just say that either it's a software or it's a data repository, you can choose either. It actually has both in it. So I don't think that really matters because you can explain that in the description um, of, on Zenodo. So um, yeah, uh, I don't think it really matters the category, but it would be nice if there was one that said research project or something like that, I think is a type of repository. Um, okay. So that's those things. Right. So I think um, oh, I'm a bit lost with all my window. I've got a million tabs open. Um, so just before um, I let you have a go, or you might be having a go actually um, while I'm talking, I'm just going to go through um, 
linking because Zenodo is not the only place that you can link from um, GitHub. You can link to Open Science Framework and you can definitely link to Figshare. So um, with Open Science Framework, it's a little bit different. What you need to do is you need to um, sign up to um, Open Science Framework, which is called OSF for short, um, and you create um, a project, we should say project, um, within um, uh, your OSF account. So um, you already have a project. So here, this is Ming's um, project. So she's made a project. Can't see. Oh, it just said my data is the project. That's not a good name for a project. So put a better name. And then what you do is you actually go to the add-ons here. And in um, in OSF, you can add on lots of different features. Um, OSF is is different to Zenodo. OSF actually is more of a working repository. So actually, it's a little bit more like GitHub in a sense. You can you can link um, OSF to lots of different things. So they're using they sort of are. I think as an organization, thinking about it more as a, um, a place to, as a hub to link all your different things that you need to use within your research projects. So you can link, I like linking to a Google Drive for a project. So you can link that and archive really Google Drive within there, which I think is really interesting. Um, you can link to GitHub, you can link to, um, I can't think, but there's absolutely loads of them that you can link to. Um, OneDrive, uh, Bitbucket, all those different sort of things you can link to. So you go, you have to create the project first um, within, um, yeah, create the account, create the new project, go to the add-on button at the top. So again, all the buttons, it's a bit like GitHub, they're in this gray banner at the top. Um, and then you have to find the actual um, sort of storage place. So it gives you like this drop down list. So as I said, there's lots of different ones here. Oh, look, so you can do Dataverse as well. Don't know why you using Dataverse. GitLab. Remember, there's not only GitHub, there's GitLab, Google Drive. So all of these things. And you can enable it. So then it will ask you to, I think, for your account details. Um, so you need to just type in. It will ask you to your password, username and password. And then it, it will show your different repositories. And you can actually select the repository um, to link to here. And it, then you will see those files within that project. And you can keep updating them really there. Um, so here, this is what um, Ali Ying's look like when she brought them in. So she's got um, her project and then um, this is her GitHub repository. So it's brought in all her different files. She's got her analysis, code, data, everything. And you can actually view it all in uh, the files directly in Open Science Framework. So, as I said, it's a bit more open search framework is a little bit more usable um, and a bit more visual, I find, than Zenodo. Zenodo doesn't visualize a lot of the files that you have within the GitHub repository and you can't really access them. You have to download the whole of the zip file, whereas this actually will allow you to browse the files and things like that. So it's a slightly different way of doing it. But the important thing is it gives you your DOI here. So on on the top here, you do have the option to have something private, but you can also make it public. So once it's public, you will be given a, um, a DOI for the project. You can also, within each project, you can actually create a different, I think they're called objects within the project, and you can get different, um, <clears throat> different um, DOIs for those. So you can actually make parts of your project public and other parts can, you can keep private within OSF. So it's just a slightly different structure actually to um, Zenodo. Right, Sarah's got a question. So for data analysis and analysis code, would you use OSF over Zenodo or maybe both for different formats? I think it really, it's just preference of what you like to use. I don't really, I don't really think there's an answer to that because both work as long-term archiving and give you a DOI. It's actually what your preference is to the way that you like using it. Um, I think I started using OSF because I liked that you could have a Google Drive that you put into it. And I think that's quite useful. But actually now I started using Zenodo more. So I would probably say it's better to stick with one um, and not spread yourself thin like I have, which is probably not the best approach. Um, Right, so now it is your turn to have a go. Um, I'm just going to check my timings. 
So I'm going to pause the video now. 